Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. Happy Workers Day to all the workers out there. I decided to make a special video for Workers Day and I want to show you how I diagnose the TV motherboard that I'm about to fix. I will take you around the steps and what I check to know that what part is fixed and what part is not fixed. I will tell you what to check, particular problems, basic problems that TVs, because a TV is being made by, the, by a man so it's not there's no guarantee it's gonna it's gonna work forever there's there's gonna be a time when it's gonna malfunction and if you understand the bot pretty well you can fix or diagnose any problem on that so this is not a fixed video this is more of a diagnose video on how to troubleshoot to find out exactly what the problem is isolate the problem and then fix the problem so i will quickly take you with my multimeter post to dc voltage the view with the two stripe the stripe beneath the first stripe has a slashed I don't know if you can see it nicely so you want to put it on this V with this two stripe one is full and the other one has some dots on it which is the DC voltage on the multimeter and you want to start checking so when I put a TV when I connect a TV to the power supply and there's power and then it shows me the red light I know for for a fact this high power section the hot part of the board it's fine it's working just fine so if I know the hot part of is fine then I get the red light then I have to go further to the secondary part of the board and check because if you can get just the red light and then if you try to power the TV on and then nothing happens it stays on the red light then you, you should know what you are dealing with and if you switch on the TV and the TV switches on and the red light goes away which means the TV is on then you must know also what you are dealing with and what is the diagnosis for that so I will start by checking with the red light on and then we will, we, will, we will walk our way around this board and check for any to learn more about the TV board so I will just start by getting the main I must get around three plus minus 300 volts yeah depending on where you are if you are having a 220 um, AC you should get 300 something volt here so or 200 and almost 300 I will just quickly check it and I'm getting 288 volts as you can see 288 is almost, cl almost close to 300 volts so I know that is fine and the red light just shows me also that so now one I want to talk about this main filter capacitor and the problems that are associated with this main filter capacitor so if you have a TV that comes on plays for a certain times goes off at, by itself then after a while you have to let it switch off and then you switch it on again and wait for a long time this is the problem this is the main charged capacitor which holds we supply the, the main power to the main transistor so that to the main transformer sorry so that every other part on this board can get exactly the power needed for it to function and fulfill its purpose so from here I normally the transformers are very strong they hold longer but sometimes you can diagnose the TV board and find out that this also the, also the problem the transformer will be the problem if the TV doesn't even come at all on because the transformer breaks down the current that is the power needed for the, the main IC to function that is like the brain of the TV we tell the TV you are on or you are off or you need this volt to be on and this volt to be off so if that main voltage is not transferred to the board it's gonna be a problem and you won't even get the power switched on so from there I like to go I like to see this board this way you start here you go this way walk all the way and then you come this way so just like the size here is the earpiece USB components and audio yes the TV antenna yes the VGA yes two HDMI ports and yes audio jacks for audio input so I'm just giving you uh, what what is going on here so you know what is going on and this side like I said in the last video this is the back backlight section of the of the motherboard this is to do with the lights that bring the video to you brightly because sometimes you have videos that you put the TV on it goes on it changes from this light and it goes on so meaning it's on but then you don't have a backlight coming on so the TV still stays dead even though it switches on most of the time the backlight is the problem and the backlights 
it's very easy to troubleshoot because you have to take the you have to you always have with the connection that comes here you have to open the screen you have to be you have to know what you're doing in order to repair the backlight or replace the backlight or you might break the screen of the TV so what you should do is to watch more tutorials from I didn't post a video yet on how to change the backlights but maybe in the future I will do but there's a lot of tutorials on YouTube which you can check to see how the backlights can be repaired so I'm just giving you where to check if what is the problem and remember what I said the first time you must always check the capacitors they must be flat I don't know if you can see nicely they must be flat like this if you see it's bulge of anything that it looks out of the ordinary then you need to change that capacitor so from the backlight section we're gonna go to the 12 volt section the 12 volt section is the main voltage needed to break down the other voltages you can see there for the board to function these 12 volts also work with the sound IC here which I talked about last time but I didn't check because I didn't connect the, the TV board to the power so this sound IC works also with this capacitor which is the 470 16 volts this capacitor is the one giving charge to this IC and so most of the times if your TV is playing but you don't get sound if everything is working fine but there's no sound you must check the sound IC or you check the capacitor giving power to the sound IC if the sound IC is fine so from there we have the dual regulator now this is one of the most important part of a TV and this dual regulator is used to break down voltages on the TV board very necessary for the TV to function like the TV voltage the voltage of the um, of the video that you see the picture it comes from this dual regulator but this dual regulator is not present on every TV there's other functions other type of regulators on different type of universal TV boards but this regulator you can check it while the, 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 the TV is off you can just check the pins you must make sure that this pin you get 3.3 .3 volts this 3.3 .3 volts is being transferred to the EEPROM I don't know if you can see that so this 3.3 .3 volts is being trans trans transferred to the EEPROM which the EEPROM is used to store the software necessary for the TV to function so you, if you are looking for TV softwares you can search online you can just get your TV board, every universal TV comes with the board, you can search it online and then you get a particular software and then you also have to check the resolution. The resolution differ according to the to the inches of the TV. So if it's a 32 inch, you will have a different resolution than a 40 inch. So when you are getting the software, always check the resolution to make sure you get this, the right software. So this one, use the EEPROM programmer to, to to reflash the software and you can check it on YouTube there's a lot of videos also there and this main chip is being run by that software so if there's a problem with this EEPROM guy this chip won't function it will become begin to malfunction and one of the things it will do is it will be like when you switch the TV on it doesn't show you the blue light, the red light it just goes straight to the power on when you plug the TV on it goes automatically power on without going to the standby and that is also one of the problems caused by the EEPROM. The EEPROM works together with this main chip and this main chip you can notice it when it gets hot that's why it has a heatsink on if it gets abnormal up not if it gets too hot which is abnormal then it won't function and the TV won't switch on so basically I showed you when the TV I, I will just go through what I showed you in this video that is the main capacitor, which is the main capacitor when the TV is placed for a certain amount of time and then goes off. And then the, the backlight, the backlight, the backlight section when the TV comes on and then it doesn't show picture. And then the sound section when it comes on shows picture but there's no sound. And then you have the video, the video is this one connecting to the backlight, to the sorry, to the TV um, screen. And the last part is the EEPROM and the main chip, which is very important to know that. So. I hope you understood something in this video and if you did understand it don't forget to leave a thumbs up subscribe to our channel you go a long way to help us thank you so much for watching bye bye